Hello everyone. I want to talk a little bit about ICAD. I have posted a whole bunch of things on the blog and there's a podcast going live about the Index Card a Day Challenge, which runs through June and July. It's a daily art challenge and you create some kind of art every day on an index card, three by five or four by six. And I use four by six cards and I have used both tabbed cards that are manila in color and I have used white cards. These are nice. They're a little bit thicker than normal. I have used both of those. So I wanted to just do sort of like a flip through. I have a bunch of years here and I'm not going to start with the oldest. I'm going to start with the newest on the theory that you might not stick with it to the end. So I thought I would show some of the newer ones first. I also wanted to show these boxes. These are really simple plastic boxes. They're inexpensive. You can get them at an office store or at Amazon. And I tend to keep my cards in these during the challenge. And in some years they stay in these afterwards. So there are two old years worth in this one, for example. And obviously I was very organized at some point and labeled them. So, and that says there are three years. So I'm going to start though with 2020 and I'm just going to show you just quickly some of the kinds of things I have done. I tend to work in series and I've talked about that in the blog post. I've put up a post that has 50 ideas. If you want to think about working in series, I have done portraits for several years in a row. And in other years, I did other kinds of series, but I tend to have some kind of a series. There are also daily prompts and weekly thematic prompts that you can follow. They are optional. So I just thought some of you might like to see this, just give you an idea as someone who draws, this is how I approach doing ICAD and have done it through the years. And again, I'm starting with the most recent year first, which was 2020. And I'm just gonna flip through and show some of the cards from each of these series. I've taken some out already, even though there are a bunch here and I won't belabor them. I'm not gonna talk about each one but I'm just gonna go through. So last year I was doing portraits. Mostly they were black and white. They integrated something, a hair detail I was working with and many of them have a crown motif. So you can see I was using Sketchy and last year I switched and I was using Micron pens for these portraits. These are roughly in order of how they unfolded last year, but I pulled some out, like I said, and on the back, I write what they are and I am wrong. They're not in order. This is ICAD 1. I thought I sorted them. This is ICAD 1. So these are not completely in order. Some of the other stacks are. So this was the very first one and this is number two. So they actually, you can tell there was, I started out with a really set approach. These look very similar. They look different than some of the later ones. This is three. Again, I was very consistent. I was doing something specific and I was continuing it. This was part of my series. Number five, so these are in order. And I was still doing it, but like this, I lost the color. Still had the detail here, but I lost the color. This was nine. So these are roughly how some of these unfolded, 11. I also write on the back what the prompt was. The prompt was brocade, for example, for this one. And I selected a portrait with this shawl with a lovely lace detail. I don't always do the prompts. Sometimes I nod to the prompts. The use of old soul, that's me. So I pull things in the way I want. I don't necessarily always directly say what the prompt was in my card. Again, we have the crown, we have the hair detail. It continued throughout a number of them, but I lost it along the way at some point. This looks like an early, oh, no, that is 16. I thought this might be earlier. I was working with something else and this is all gonna play into what I'm doing this year. I've written about this on the blog now and there's a combination of this set and the 2019 set that I think are going to be instrumental in how I approach this year. This is the 19th and the prompt was pause. Self-portrait, June 20th. I do a self-portrait on my birthday always. This may have been for my 50 before 50 year. So as you can see, these all held together in series. They all 
are different, but they are similar. You can see what I was doing. This would have been the birthday self-portrait, yeah, on the 23rd. You can see that I was doing something that I was continuing, even though it doesn't always play out the same way. And this is a rogue one that ended up in color. And I did this during a group drawing call. Look at this down here, this little detail. Didn't write the prompt. I think this was related though. That one also looks very different. That one's not dated. I do recommend that you date your cards on the back and number them so that you can tell where they go in your series. So that is a look at 2020. And again, started out with this little set Not really little. The first bunch of them really held together, I think, differently. Some of these have a, a unity in look, and there's a unifying tone and style to these. I don't know if they're actually in the frame, but you can see where I started. And I started out fairly consistent and fairly strong with what I was doing, a look and a line and again, I had switched to Micron, which was new for me. I have always used fountain pen in the past or something, a different kind of fine liner. So this was new, 2020, last year. So then going back a year before that to 2019. So 2019, I used black and white portraits with Copic markers in the margins. That was an extension of the year before that, which we'll talk about in a minute, but had been very Copic heavy, very full color. So this was different. And this has turned out, I think, to be one of the most important years for me. So I'm going to flip through these. You will see that there is some evolution throughout the course of the series. Again, I've taken some of these out. So this is a representative sample from the 61 days. But you will see that there is a change as we move through them, and yet the series holds together. You can still tell that they all went together. My table is squeaky too. This is a little fold up table. So, again, starting out, this was May 30th. I did a couple warm up cards, and I talk a lot about that in the blog and on the podcast about testing out your ideas, testing what you think you might want to do May 29th. So, May 29, May 30, two that I thought, well, let me just make sure I want to do this again, that I want to use Copic especially. So just flip through some of these. So you can see these were very dramatic in terms of black and white portrait, high color backgrounds with patterns. Definitely some lettering in the hair again, which we saw in 2020 as a continuation. Probably other things, if I look through like this, I would see things that I actually love this TLDR, too long, didn't read. Looks like stencil might have been the prompt. Goggles. This macarons was actually the prompt. So you can see that these just hold together. Some of these I like more than others, but there is something that worked about this series for me and something that I still really enjoy when I look back through. A little bit of rainbow here, and that's going to happen more and more in this set. That's a really different one. I had misplaced this box and just found it. I have misplaced one other set too, which I can't explain, but it's been a long pandemic year and things are in all sorts of places. This remains one of my favorites. Music box was the prompt. And some of them I don't love, don't love that one. But they all go together. This is also one that I actually still really, really speaks to me. This, this is actually, I might leave this one out. This is one that really speaks to what I think I'm gonna do this year. So this is a, a pull out. But you can see these are all, most of these actually do address the prompt and 
they work within my series, but they address whatever the prompt might have been. And so I like to do it that way. Here I was moving into a slightly different look, much bolder background. As you can see, I had a lot of white eyes this year too. These full color backgrounds are among my favorites in this whole set. They're flat, they're not patterned, they're very flat color. This is one of my favorites with the crossword puzzle shirt. These rainbow sets in the back though, this was very important. Some of my favorite cards are in this, this sequence. So again, these are 2019 and you can see that the 2020 cards, it's still the same person, it's the same artist, but it was a different approach. There's a much finer line here, this little bit of detailing in the hair, this deconstruction that I was doing. It's similar to some of what you see in 2019, but it's definitely different. It had a slightly different motivation, but it built upon the prior series. Each series stands alone. They work together really well, and they were important. They were similar and different at the same time. So 2019 and 2020. Now, so now 2018 was a big year for me. And this is not one. This is a different drawing from the same time. These are postcards. I can't find the box of these cards. This is my sunglasses series. And it was my first time ever using Copic. It's one of my favorite series ever, although I think I have improved greatly in the 2019 and 2020 series. This was still an important shift for me and a shift that doing the index card a day challenge really enabled. So some of these are printed as postcards. I printed these to help support the Creativity Matters podcast. I didn't manage to sell hardly any of them, but I can't find the box of these. I am sure they are in a container just like this, a pink one, and I just can't find it right now. I have been displaced from my room this year, so they are somewhere, but I have a few of the postcards. The prints are not quite as crisp, but it gives a look at what I did. So this is 2018. So I did portraits, Copic, full color, and they all had sunglasses, so there were reflections in the lenses. This is one of my favorites. At the time, this is also one of my favorites. These are just a couple postcards I had still sitting out. So you can see I was still doing the black and white work in some of these with the color. Some of them were definitely bolder black and white and color, and some of them were just full color. Again, here the color is just in the glasses. Here we can have reflection and a bit of color. And then we go to this one, which is the, these three are examples of very full color. I never even bought skin tones, so I was just working with what I had, which is partly why I have so many that I just left black and white, because I don't have the colors to do this. I'm not planning on a full color Copic series again, but this was a really influential set for me that summer. Set those out of the way too. Okay, and then if we switch, this would be 2017, right? 17, 18, 19, no. Yeah, 2017, 17, 18, 19, 20, right. So 2017, I did ballpoint pen, which was a first for me. It was an exploration. I had never used ballpoint. And you have to remember that index card takes any medium differently. And these uh, tab cards that I was using that year, they are manila. They are a slicker surface in some ways than some index cards. And they didn't take ballpoint the same way other papers do. I've used ballpoint after this on real drawing paper, and I know that it can shade very differently. And again, I was really experimenting with this. These took forever. It's not necessarily the same approach everyone uses with ballpoint, but at the time, this was an important series. And this was the first one. And I drew this on a plane ride to Kentucky. And this is one pen. It just shows differently. This is a paint swatch. So this year I wanted to use, play with the surface. In addition to ballpoint, I had another element to my series and I was adding a different texture or different paper to each card. It breaks them up a little bit, but it also changes how the actual medium looks. So this was 
early in my portrait work as well. This was probably the first year I was doing portraits. So they look a lot different. This is why I went backwards in time. Would have been better to go forwards in time, but I was afraid you wouldn't stick with me. So this is 2017. And this is a friend of mine and I actually have always really liked this portrait. I thought this really did capture her. This is one that was different for me. Doing children was different. This was my cover card for that year. At the beginning, I always do a cover and mine tend to have a self-portrait on them. So I had 2017. This was a test I did to show the passes and what tone I could build up. As you see, the way I was using ballpoint took 15 layers to get to this darkness. So this was a good and handy gradient test that I did just to see what I could achieve on white, even though the rest of these cards were manila. So this one, you can see I did got most of it on white. I think I used lots of the white just because it really did change the tone. So it's an interesting collage element though. Steampunk might've been my first steampunk. I turned these into postcards too, also to try and support the podcast. And I still have a ton of postcards. I have both ballpoint postcards and sunglasses postcards. If you ever need postcards, this one, obviously I got very dark, took a lot of time to build this up. I've always really liked this one. It says I was watching Anne of Green Gables and then the rain. So I sometimes make notes on the back to contextualize what I'm doing. Some people tell me they always remember what they were doing when they draw something, but I don't. Although I know that this one was on the plane ride back from Kentucky. I did the first one on the way there and this one was on the way back and it says finished on the plane ride home. You can see the way I did these collage strips, they ended up their own element, sometimes different or unusual or unique. This has some red ballpoint as well. Self-portrait. I did a whole week of self-portraits in this year. Again, I was really new to portraits. My work looks a lot different now. I also look a lot different now, but this was a whole set of self-portraits through the years. So glasses are different in all of them too. And I'm still glad that I did this series. I think I did one week of these self-portraits. Whole week of them. I still like these too. I don't know why I like both of these. So that was 2017, the year of ballpoint. We're only going to look at one other. Well, I don't know. These are all together. So the year before that was a year that had multiple series. It started out a Teddy's series. And I did a really long podcast when I decided I might do this focus. I wasn't sure. I knew I would be gone for the first few weeks. I talk in the newest podcast about testing your ideas. And I tested this idea a bunch of times. So I started testing all of these same May. I did a lot of testing. So I wasn't totally sure if I would be able to stick with this idea. And so I tested it. These two were two of the drawings that convinced me I think I would like to do this. But I did a whole bunch of other things. I did contours just to see how it would feel. Maybe I might do contours. This is a stuffed animal. It was Teddy's and stuffed things. It's a little cute finger puppet. Finger puppet. So I was really trying to make sure that I thought, and I obviously did a bunch of testing this year. It's really trying to make sure that I thought I wanted to do this and that it would work. Obviously I have a lot of stuffed things. And I also did a little bit of exploration here with some collage, stenciled letters, stamps, which I've often used in collage. Don't love it, did a lot of it. So that was how this started. And then here is my cover card. Like I said, I do a self-portrait cover. I had 2016. And then I kicked off this series and I started out with these bears. So I was away. I was working from my mother's. So this has some fabric, which I had done in years before that. So there's always this little bit of carryover year to year. 
This was number four, and the prompt was writer, and I had no portrait experience at that point. Bears were where I was starting, clearly. I don't want to be anything other than me. Lyrics were also very important for me. I used lyrics in the years before this. So if I look through some of these, you know, they're a little bit all over the place. You see the stamps, you see the stenciling, you see the bears. It's for one of the first years that I started doing some of the prompts. I didn't sort through what I was going to show here. Lots of collage here. So they're a little bit all over the place. This all says 2016 though. So obviously bears where I could or stuffed things, but it didn't didn't quite work out that it held through everything. Definitely still got some bears going on. A lot of collage, a lot of fabric. And then we started shifting and we had other things start happening. A couple of these are unfinished even. This is the birthday card for that year, self-portrait. See the stamp, the stenciling, there's fabric. And then again, we have something stuffed. 24, these, some of these are in order. So some of these, there's another stuffed thing that didn't get inked. Again, this is several years ago and obviously I was a little more unfocused. I'm much happier with these more recent portrait focus series. I've always liked this one. I was using some white acrylic on these cards and then trying to draw on them. Acrylic over stamps, so you get the color and texture from the stamp. This is one that I do like. I tried that several times with varying degrees of success. Clearly here I was kind of out of the bears. So, we go on through though. At some point in here, I started doing windows. And I hit upon the rest of this series, which was where I really started focusing. This is, looks like it's probably earlier in the set. Maybe not, I don't know. So chairs and windows. So chairs, chair and window, chair and window, chair, collage cards. I continued that after this was over. This is a chair and window, chair filled with text. An odd size. I ended up using this size for some things. So you can see that this series didn't hold together, but there are several sub series within. There are some stuffed things and teddies. There's a whole set of windows, a whole set of chairs. And I continued after this iCAD ended with even more of these. I continued maybe to day 100 or so, lots of small cards and lots of collage. So I continued for a little bit with some chairs. This is a quilt and a chair of mine. And then moved on into collage. So there were all kinds of things happening as these continued. So that was 2016 and that's a huge shift, a huge shift from these, right? 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. And I do have 2013, 14, and apparently, yes, 15 in here. And they are very different, although still very me. So having this sort of history of cards and the ability to pull these out at any time is really nice. And it is compact in the same way that looking through a journal is, I have this whole series of index cards from Index Card A Day and the Index Card A Day Challenge. So I encourage you to think about it. I encourage you to go look at some of the information I've put on the blog. You'll find a lot more information on the Daisy Yellow blog site about how to sign up. There are lots of old podcasts that are about ICAD and about daily art, working in a series, finding your creative balance, and most importantly, doing what you love. Because 
you should love what you do. And yes, you may have a card that you don't love, but when you look back, the hope is you think, yeah, I still really like it. Yes, I can see where it may be better in another year. I got better. I continued to get better, but I still liked what I was doing. And at the time, I might have even loved what I was doing. And I'm still happy to look back through them. And I especially like it when they all hold together like this. I can tell this was a series. The teddy bear year, that kind of through line wasn't consistent enough. Had I stuck with the bears, it would have been an awesome series. Had I just done windows, it would have been an awesome series or just done chairs, just done chairs and windows. But I didn't continue it the same way. So I hope this gives you some inspiration. Your work is totally different than mine, but I hope that you think about what you might do and how you might want to do it and that it's exciting for you. It's exciting to work in a series and it just gives you a way to, you know, one, oh, cool, I did one. But then when you do five and you lay them out, you're like, oh, wow, look, I have this whole series of things that stick together and they make sense together versus one in this and one looks like this and one looks like this. And that to me would be so disjunctive that I wouldn't like it. But I am very happy to be able to look through this one, even though there's some differences here and some shifting from where I started to where I ended up. I know it all went together and the evolution made a lot of sense. And this year, I think we're going to see some more evolution. I thought through a bunch of different ideas, but as I worked on the retrospective blog post, seeing the images from these years, I just... They speak to me in a way that I probably need to just go back there. So I hope you'll consider ICAD. Hope you'll consider checking out the podcast, the Creativity Matters podcast. I hope you will find me at Instagram and I hope you'll click subscribe. Talk about creativity here, tracking in Notion. I will be talking about tracking ICAD and I hope you'll join me. Thanks.